Good little feedback on the yucca from Emotion. It's been about a month and a half, two months since it's been in my garden, and we'll see the advantages of this robotic mower from Emotion, as well as the disadvantages that we'll see later, because there are a few. As for the advantages I found, first, it's ultra quiet. Listen to the noise. Here, you almost can't hear it. The second advantage, it's intelligent, meaning that once programmed, it will do all the zones on such and such a day at such and such an hour. That's up to you to decide on the app. Also, thanks to its little camera at the front, it will be able to detect obstacles. So let's say we'll do a test right after, live. Basically here, we have a camera that detects obstacles, so we don't have to put it. In fact, it will depend on what you want. For example, here, I'll put this here. Boom, here, it detects, it cuts the tent, it will turn around, it will probably pass here. I find that really very interesting. So already the detection is really impressive. Clearly, if you have a pet, it will detect perfectly. Also, the camera will allow us to have a real-time return of the image if you have Wi-Fi next to the house. So here we can adjust the cutting height here from two centimeters to nine centimeters. It's not on all robots that you can adjust up to nine centimeters. This will allow you to cut fairly high. So here I'm at seven centimeters. You see we're finally in the alley, so it's not worth cutting too short, otherwise it will burn. So I let it do at six to seven centimeters. Another advantage also is that we can put a collection bin at the back. This could be practical in autumn if you have a lot of leaves. So we can also test it on this YouTube channel. The third advantage is really impressive. It's the cutting quality thanks to these two plates underneath the robot. Frankly, it makes a flawless quality cut. Look at the images. We can see the lines, the direction of the lines, etc. We can also make patterns. I had tested by making a heart. I find the result really beautiful. It will also detect rain. So here we have a little rain sensor. If it starts raining, it will return to the dock. The dock is over there. Well, here's the little charger. I had put a little roof on it temporarily. I'll need to improve that a bit better. And the RTK antenna, which is here because it's a robot, so it locates itself thanks to this antenna. The antenna sends directly to the satellite, and from the satellite, it goes to the robot. So here, I've done all the updates, so it's up to date. Also, I was a little worried because of its pivoting wheel at the front, because I thought, well, it's going to be a bit tricky in some places and all. In the end, for a fairly flat garden or one with a little slope, but not too much, the robot does the job perfectly, and its gripped wheels at the back are fairly wide and large so they are over 25 centimeters high. Here, the gripped wheels still allow good adhesion to the ground. You'll still see that it has some disadvantages that we'll see just after. So similarly, many of you ask me whether it's imperative to collect the grass. And well, not at all. In fact, it needs to be mowed about every two to three days. And here you see it cuts, but we don't even see it. In the end, it makes fertilizer for the grass. It's perfect. In fact, here it will make some small grass blades. It just cuts them. The grass will decompose, it will improve your soil, and you won't see the grass blades at all. Of course, you shouldn't wait 10 days to mow. You should do it every two to five days. So what I also mentioned in terms of advantages, I'll put it on pause, boom. Well, we already have a handle at the back, which is quite practical for lifting it. It's not very heavy. We'll put it in the other direction, just. Well, you see, we still have all the safety mechanisms that start when the plates are stopped instantly when we lift the robot. That's pretty cool. And what I really find nice about this robot compared to the Luba is here, we have two little iron bars. In fact, the advantage here is already the two plates, which allow for a fairly wide and good quality cut. The fact that we can easily change the blades, well, that's on all robots. We can reverse them with a screw. And the advantage is that here, the grass won't get too much stuck, or not at all, in fact, because it can fall easily. So if it's wet and you have a fairly damp garden, I find the two little iron bars quite well thought out because the grass shouldn't accumulate too much here compared to the Luba 2, where the covers are a bit tighter. So here it will be more suitable for gardens with a bit of wet grass, I suppose. Well, this system will adapt better. To have tried it, as soon as the grass was wet, it didn't really stick. It didn't stay, at least. We have a little glass at the front to see the camera better and for it to detect obstacles better. So it works perfectly well. Another advantage as well is the app, which is quite intuitive. We'll be able to adjust everything on the app, meaning the number, well, the cut you want to make. If you want to create a grid, that's what I want to do. So it will make a cut like this, a cut like that. Even to program the robot, we'll outline your garden with the app and the phone. You'll just need Bluetooth from the phone and connect it to the robot. You don't have to have Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi will only be used for updates from time to time. In this garden, I don't have Wi-Fi since the house is under renovation. 
So to make the updates, I did it using a friend's phone who shared his connection with me. And that's it. The updates aren't frequent. It's just at the beginning to make improvements on the robotic mower. To restart, boom, press here on the grass and start. So now it will continue. Actually, right now, there are promotions on this robotic mower, so I think they'll keep the promotions throughout the summer. It's very interesting, and in addition, you get 50 euros off on you first order. I'll put the link, you go through this link, and you sign up for the newsletter, and you get 50 euros more. So that's always a good deal. Another advantage also is the precision down to the centimeter, thanks to the RTK antenna that we saw just above. That's pretty cool. Plus, we can create multiple zones. I have a zone here behind the road, so I make it cross the road. I have a zone above and a zone in the middle. It is suited for surfaces of up to 2,400 square meters, maximum for the Yucca 2000. And the Yucca 1000 will go up to 1,200 square meters. So that's already quite a lot. I recommend you go on GeoPortail to calculate your garden surface. Now, I would recommend this robotic mower for flat gardens with a gentle slope. A gentle slope will be 35 to 40 percent. It can go up to 45 percent, but I find that it tends to slip. So I'll put some pictures of a test here. That means beyond 40 to 45 percent, the rear wheels, since it only has two driven wheels, will slip and it could leave marks. So if your whole garden isn't like this, it will pass easily. Also, for a rather flat garden, meaning if you have bumps, well, it's pretty flat here. If you have bumps, the front cover might touch. So I'll also put a small image of a garden with some holes. After that, you can easily fill the holes with some soil and still the front cover would lightly rub. But even with a fairly deep hole, the robot still managed to pass. I also didn't mention we have a bumper. Not all robots have a bumper. So here, the hole part, if I press, boom, especially here, there's the bumper. So if it hits an obstacle, it will reverse. And of course, it's wireless, peripheral, so you understood that. Well, if we move on to the disadvantages of this robotic mower, the first one, which is not too big a disadvantage, is the fact that we have to adjust the cutting height here. We can't do it through the app like the Luba 2. And for me, the second disadvantage will be for a sloped garden, at least a steep slope. It might slip with the wheels, so it's a bit of a shame. Also, the two major disadvantages will be gardens that are a bit hilly. Clearly, I would recommend you go for the Luba 2. You'll have fewer issues with the Luba 2 than with the Yucca if your garden has a steep slope and if there are holes everywhere. Well, clearly, I'd recommend the Luba 2 with its four-wheel drive and its front shock absorbers, which would be much better suited. For now, I think it has a very, very good value for money, and I'm very happy with it. This robotic mower works really well. It's precise. It's not overly expensive. You can find it for 1,350 euros or even less with the 50 euro discount. So... I invite you to use the link in the description. In any case, if you have any questions about this robotic mower, don't hesitate to ask them, even if it's about the Luba 2 or if you're deciding between the two. I'll answer you with pleasure within the hour, or at least the day. And really, another advantage is that the material quality is more than correct. It's solid. You can feel its quality. Honestly, not all robotic mowers have this quality. I find it really quite qualitative. I hope this video was helpful to you. If that's the case, remember to give a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss the next videos about the Yucca and the Luba 2. I'll put the link in the video description if you wish to order it. You get 50 euros off on the website. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.